It's the three on Plex TV. <laughs> What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Plax, and I am back with another episode of The Three on Plax TV. And this is part two of my WNBA uh, should expand, I guess, documentary conversation. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I guess it's not a documentary because I'm just sitting here talking. Um, I'm once again in an undisclosed location, uh, but I really wanted to get this video done for y'all. I know it's a little dark in here, but I might, I'm going to try to fix it in post so it's a little bit brighter uh, so you guys can see my handsome, handsome face. Uh, Ew, gross, right? Um, so in part one, in part one of w the WNBA should expand, I basically just talked about my reasoning behind it and the benefits of it and the players uh, that could be potentially coming in or could be um, forgotten about because of the lack of roster space in teams in the WNBA. You see what I mean? So, and I and I and I also gave my, I guess, blueprint on how they could do it quickly, but not extremely quickly. So over a ten year period, basically, they would uh, add two teams every other year up from 2024 to 2034. So in 10 years time, they would have um they would have doubled the amount of teams that they have in the WNBA. And also, I feel like which I didn't say in the last video, I feel like they should up their roster spots from 12 to 15. Or you know what, from 12 to 14, you know? Just just giving more space. Giving more space. And another thing is too the NBA has like G League teams and um and I understand and they have practice squads and stuff like that. And I understand the WNBA, you know, is already in a spot where they don't necessarily have a whole bunch of money to play with, but I do think like a offshoot, a G League esque WNBA uh league would be extremely beneficial as well um, for just like younger players and stuff like that. But that's, that might be, I just kind of thought of that. That's a video for another time. But in this video, I'm going to be talking about like just different locations that I think would be beneficial to the WNBA for, to have WNBA teams all in. Um, and where the places they should expand, they should look at history, legacy, and marketing as well, obviously. I've been talking about marketing a lot in this, like, I guess, series. But the first team that I think they should try to send a team to is Houston and bring back the Houston Comets. Now, the reason, the biggest reason I feel like they should bring back the Houston Comets is the Houston Comets run, won the first four WNBA championships. Why is this team gone? <laughs> You see what I'm saying? Like, why is this team not in the league anymore? And they're, they started it. They won the first four WNBA championships. They were the first dynasty and the first champions in WNBA history. So why are they gone? I feel like bringing back the Houston Comets would be big time. Because not only is Houston a big market within itself, they already have an NBA team there in the Houston Rockets, even though they're not playing that well. But they're like, you know, they're a young team. I I hear rumors of James Harden coming back. Um, I hear like different rumors about them trying to get certain players. They could even get Victor Wembanyama. You see what I'm saying? So Houston is just a couple moves away from being relevant again. As far as the Houston Rockets, you bring the Houston Commons back, a team that has won, a team that has legacy, and you supercharge that by drafting Caitlin Clark, <laughs> drafting Angel Reese. I feel like Angel Reese in Houston would be fucking amazing. Paige, Haley Van Le you see what I'm saying? Make a move like that. It's it start like you you're you're on basically. <laughs> So you're not only you're you're checking off all the boxes, you're checking off history and legacy. They've had a team before, not just any team, a team that has won championships, not just any championships, the team that 
won the first championship and not just the first championship, the first four championships in WNBA history, you have to bring that team back into the fold. You have to. I feel like that would be, I feel like that's a missed opportunity to not have them in uh, the WNBA. And I still, I, if somebody could tell me, I'm not really sure uh, why are the Houston Comets gone? <laughs> like what? Like that's a legit question because the it just don't really make too much sense to me that they're not in the league anymore. But that's that's a whole that's a whole different thing. Um, and most of all, like Houston is a basketball city. Like I just said, like they the Houston Rockets have been there for a long time. The Comets were there and dominating. They they a basketball city. Make it happen. Make it happen. You know what I'm saying? But um. Uh, the second team that I think I'm going to be talking about a lot of teams here. The second team is the Detroit Shock. Now, this is another situation of a team that has won multiple championships. I believe they won three championships in the WNBA before they were gone. I don't know why they're gone, to be completely honest with you. if And again, in the comments down below, guys, if you can explain to me why these teams aren't in the league anymore... Um, I'm not a professional. I just really love basketball. So I don't know all the information. I just know what I know. So please, in the comments, if you know, please let me know. Like, why is Detroit gone? Why is Houston gone? These teams that won multiple championships, these dynasty teams that are no longer in the WNBA. But the Detroit Shock won three championships in the WNBA. They One of their championships was extremely historic because they – the year previous, prior to them winning the championship, they were the worst team in the WNBA. And then the very next year, they won the championship. That's, that's a beautiful story. And I was talking about storytelling in the previous video. You could play up on that. The team that went worst to first is back. And again, Detroit is a basketball city. Detroit has a grit and grind legacy. The bad boy Pistons, the Pistons in 2004. Even the Pistons now, they're not the greatest team, but they're tough. They're very tough. Detroit has been a basketball city for a very long time, and I think they would love to have their WNBA team back. And then... Another thing, you could get, I don't know if he still want to coach, get Bill Lambeer back in there. <laughs> get Bill Lambeer back in there. Um, get you some get you some tough players in there, some players with heart, um, and go on a run. I mean, obviously you're not gonna win like off the rip, but build build uh what's the word? Build that identity. That's what it is. Build that identity. That is Detroit. Make Detroit love this team like they've loved teams in the past. And I think you'll be golden. I think you'll be golden. Um, At three, I have the Sacramento Monarchs. I think they should go to Sacramento. One, uh, because another team that won a championship in the WNBA, that's not there anymore. Two, Sacramento... I'm, I'm trying to word this properly. Sacramento has a very strong basketball fan base. You know what I mean? Like, especially now. Like, they were they had a huge fan base when C. Webb and Pedro and Mike Bibby and all those guys were there. Jason Williams were Vladdy Divas when they were there. But and those those fans stayed loyal during the worst of times, still selling out games. Like, coming to regular season games, selling out. And they were losing bad for the last, what, 20 years? They just got to the playoffs this year with Darren Fox and Sabonis and those guys. And I think that's beautiful. I think that's proof right there why they deserve a WNBA team because they love their teams. And I think they would they would accept a team. The other, the other places that I named and will name will too, but... They, I think they would probably be the most open to having a WNBA team. I think they would accept the WNBA team with open arms. They would love that. 
because they're growing into a huge basketball city. They love the Kings. Even at their worst, they love the Kings. You know what? Sacramento reminds me of Buffalo Bills fans. I'm from Buffalo, by the way, if you didn't know. They remind me of Buffalo Bills fans because even at our worst, Bills fans are still out there bundled up in the freezing cold watching us get our ass whooped. We've been better in recent years, but literally my entire life, the bill sucked <laughs> up until like we got Josh Allen and stuff like that. But we sucked, but people were still out there. Die hard fans. My dad is one of them. Die hard fans. You know what I'm saying? I think Sacramento is like that when it comes to basketball. Also, it's California. It's California. I don't I wouldn't say Sacramento is the hugest market, but you're in California. You can't really lose in a situation like that. Um yeah, and, and then again, like I said before, Sacramento won a championship. So that's legacy right there. That's that's one more championship than the Sacramento Kings have won. So I think that's another reason they would just be ready and willing to have this team back. Let's win another one. Let's go get it again. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I think I think the Monarchs coming back, would um, they would sell out games. I think they would consistently sell out games like the Kings do. Um, especially if you get a good, obviously again, like an expansion team, probably not going to be good or immediately, but once you get good and build an identity, I think that they would be extremely exciting and they would sell out games within like the first three to five years, they'd be selling out games. I think the first year they would sell out games just off of excitement alone. You know what I mean? Um, and I think the guys that own the Kings, should buy it. I think they should do that. My my personal opinion. Um, next, I have San Antonio. The San Antonio Silver Stars. Now, the Silver Stars were in the league previously, led by Becky Hammond, mostly Becky Hammond was a huge star in San Antonio. That's why I think, I know, I know the Raptors are trying to sign, was it the Raptors? I think it was the Raptors. The Raptors were trying to sign her, and obviously she's the coach for the Aces right now. And I don't know if she would necessarily want to leave the Aces for an expansion team or leave an NBA team for an expansion team. But if you could, get Becky Hammond in as the coach and copy the Spurs dynamic. Now, obviously... You can't, like, completely do that. Like, it, it, to do that, you would need a David Robinson or a Tim Duncan or something like that. You would have to be blessed to stumble upon one of those guys. But build towards it. I know I've said that a lot here. Build towards it. And what I mean is create the Spurs culture. And Becky, Becky kind of did that with the Aces. Create. The, which, which, funny enough, the Aces used to be the Silver Stars, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. But bring, bring the Silver Stars back to San Antonio. Hire Becky Hammond as a coach. Give her whatever she wants. <laughs> Give her complete control. I don't know what you got to do, but get her in there just because people are going to show up just off the strength. Um, and she's an amazing coach. She's proven that. Uh, when it, she won a championship her first year with the Aces, like she's proven she's... Uh, a, a, an immaculate coach and you copy the Spurs dynamic. You copy Greg Popovich. And I think you become a dynasty over time with Becky Hammond at the helm and, and growing towards Spurs esque basketball and staying consistent with that. I think cause the Spurs basketball and the WNBA is a match made in heaven. The NBA, the reason the Spurs kind of like, I guess, fell off a bit, one, because a lot of their stars left or retired or anything or, or things like that, but also the league changed. And Golden State took Spurs offense and ramped it up times 10. So they sped it up. But in the WNBA, you don't necessarily have to do that. You can just run Spurs offense and I think with the right players, it don't even have to be necessarily great players. I think you could really make a huge impact. Um, 
Char- I have the Charlotte Sting down here. They used to be a team. I don't know much about them, but what I what I recommend is what I recommend is you get Michael Jordan to buy the team and you just run with it. <laughs> you, you get Michael Jordan to buy the team. I think he will. He he don't I don't think he owns part of the Hornets or I think he's trying to sell his portion of the Hornets. You get you get him to purchase the Charlotte Sting. And you make it happen because Charlotte's already a basketball city. And I, and I think people will be excited about it. I think you make that happen. Um, now, the first few teams I was talking about, the comments, Detroit, Sacramento, the first few teams I was talking about was teams that have already been in the WNBA before. But I have some, I guess, suggestions for different locations. Um my first suggestion is Mexico City. Now, the reason I'm suggesting Me- Mexico City is because the NBA has been trying to get to this place for a very long time. They've been having like exhibition games in Mexico City. I think I think they even had some um, some regular season games in Mexico City too. I think it would be a good. T- Apparently, it's a ba- it's a basketball city as well. Apparently, they love basketball. I feel like it would be a good tester for the NBA. I think the NBA should invest in that. Invest in a WNBA team in Mexico City because I feel like that would just be beneficial for them. Because you get to actually see how the fan base in the city treats a basketball, a professional basketball team, which gives you more incentive to put an NBA team there. And I think no better way to do that than to test with the WNBA and also it benefits the WNBA in their expansion program that I'm suggesting basically. Um, and this team could be owned by the NBA quote unquote, you see what I'm saying? So I think that would be a wonderful move. It's already a basketball city. They already love basketball. I think this would be another situation where they would accept the team with open arms. I think games would sell out for sure. And you create, you will be creating a brand new fan base in a city that loves basketball already, in a city that already wants a basketball team. I think that's a match made in heaven right there. Um, <clears throat> second, I have Toronto. This this is kind of similar, kind of similar to some of the other teams that I was talking about. They didn't have a basketball a WNBA team, but. It's already a basketball city. You're expanding into a different country, which is huge. And you have a direct link to the Toronto Raptors, who have who recently won a championship, um, have a raucous fan base who love the Raptors, even when they weren't winning. Like, they loved DeRo- DeRozan and Lowry up there. And I guess... No disrespect, but the biggest thing about Toronto, Drake. You know how you know how much Drake would promote a WNBA team? It's two of his favorite things besides making music. Uh women and basketball. <laughs> He's gonna He he gonna be the poster boy. He gonna you know what? The team is gonna be called OVO. The Toronto OVOs. <laughs> He's going to, the Toronto Owls. That's what they're going to be. He is going to put, he might buy the team if you suggest it to him. Or at least maybe not be a full, but like be like a part owner or something like that. He Well, actually, I feel like it'd probably be cheaper to buy a WNBA team than it is to buy an NBA team. So, yeah, I think he can own a WNBA team possibly. I don't think that's crazy. Or maybe, if anything, be a part of fifty fifty owner with somebody. I think that that's a I, that might be the easiest one on here <laughs> to get done. Talk to Drizzy, talk to Drizzy and see uh, how he feels about that. Because one, it's an investment because the WNBA is growing. Um, I'm sure he would like to own a, a basketball team. He loves basketball. I don't see why he wouldn't. Um, and this would be a perfect opportunity for him. The city of Toronto, his country, and for basketball fans, man. So 
that's that's my suggestion for for Toronto. Um, now I read too while I was doing my research for this that Commissioner um, Engelbert is already kind of on this, like on it in a way. But she said like she's not really in a rush and it's not really it's like it's looking like around 2025 ish. And with all due respect to the commissioner, that's not I think this needs to be expedited. Expansion needs to be expedited. And I think the rate that I suggested in the previous video in the beginning of this video needs to be the rate every other year adding two teams until 2034. I know that's easier said than done. Like I'm just sitting in an undisclosed location talking shit. So it's easy for me to, you know, say that, but, um, cause you got to get buyers and stuff like that. But I think like, that's something that the WNBA should re- this is something the WNBA should really lock in on. And this is some of the location that I seen her suggest and, you know, just different people around, the WNBA suggested um, Portland, which makes a lot of sense because it's already a basketball city. Portland is the Trailblazers has been there for a long time and the direct link to the Trailblazers. Oakland, which again, West Coast Oakland has a, a huge fan base with Golden State was there. They let they're leaving now, but they were there. And Nashville, which kind of surprised me. But Nashville is on 2K when you when you look to create to create new teams. Uh, Nashville's on 2K, so I guess I don't know what Nashville's um, like basketball fan base is. But hey, fuck it, right? <laughs> let's do it if they if they want a team there, let's do it. And a couple teams that I didn't see were Boston, Philly, and Miami. I think. Those are no-brainers right there. I think you need teams in Boston, Philly, and Miami. Um, And I think I get what the commissioner is saying, but I think, in my opinion, she should very much ex- expedite the process and get this going because the WNBA needs to expand. Now, whoo. My my mic's about to die, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pack this up. But um, yeah, guys, I really just I'm really passionate about this. I really think this needs to happen. I think it'll be great for the league. Um, let me know what you guys think of the locations I talked about. If you haven't already, check out the first video I did about the WNBA expanding. Um, yeah, and just let me know what you think. Let's have a conversation in the comments. Um, but make sure you like. Make sure you comment, make sure you subscribe, make sure you ding that notification bell so you know every time I drop a video. And most of all, YouTube, I love you guys. Peace. It's the three on Black TV. Oh, yeah. Black TV. <laughs>